Buenos días and welcome to Stepping Stones Lección 5. N -n -n Nervous Uno. In a little while, I'm going to tell you a story that's popular with kindergartners and first and second graders. That's who I made the story for. However, I want to tell it to you because I want you to try telling it yourself at school or home or wherever. Even stories for little children take practice. I don't care whether you're in high school Spanish or college Spanish and you get straight A's. Stories for little children are not easy. If you knew as much as a three-year-old from South America or anywhere in Latino America, you would know a lot. Of course, some of you already do speak Spanish. In the background of the story that I will tell in a little while is one of these insects called a cicada. And this one is coming out of its skin in my brother's backyard. In the story, I will use flowers of four different colors. And I know that the blanco, azul, and rojo aren't exactly what they look like on the picture, but pretty close. Language can sound really weird. We often start a story with the words, once upon a time, but have you ever stopped to wonder what that can mean? Once upon a time? What kind of time does it mean? What if somebody came to you from another country and they were learning English and they said, can you tell me what this is? Once upon a time, would you be able to explain that to them? Time can mean different things, like what a clock says. So would once upon a time mean one sitting upon dos y media? Or uno sitting upon las cinco? Time can also mean speed, how long it takes to do something. She finished the race in 3.34. He finished the test in 107, one minute and seven seconds. Time can also refer to a season or a while, a period of time. There was a time when people didn't travel in cars or planes. Time can also refer to an experience. I had a good time. My mother used to tell me when I was growing up, Whenever I went to a party or anything, she'd say, Now don't forget, when you leave, tell them you had a good time. I think you'll agree that during the stories that are told, once upon a time always means a season or a while. Long ago in a season of time. Long ago during a while. Once upon a time. Once upon a time, there was a numero uno who wanted to go out and smell the flores. It stopped by and smelled la flor blanca. Mmm, mmm, dijo uno. Me gusta mucho, huele muy bien. Huele muy bien. It smells really good. Or, you smell really good. Huele muy bien. Then he smelled la flor azul. Mmm, mmm, huele muy bien. Then he smelled la flor roja. Ah, una flor roja, qué bonita. But he thought all of the flores were pretty. He smelled la flor roja. Mmm, 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 qué bonita. Y huele muy, muy bien. Then he smelled la flor amarilla. Mm. Qué bonita es la flor amarilla. And on top of that, it smells so good. He said it again. Huele muy bien. He thought all of the flores smelled good. Uno loved to go out for a walk. He went out. 
ゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥアディオス The next day, Uno went out again. Do, 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 to smell the flores. Do, 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 Uno went out again the next day do, 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 to smell the flores. Do, 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 do. Hola! Ah! Oh, no, 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 no. Me llamo cuatro. ¿Y tú? Me, 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 me llamo uno. ¿Y cómo estás? Muy bien. Gracias. Adios. The next day, Uno went out again. Do, 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 I wanted to say, mucho gusto. Mm, glad to meet you too. <laughs> Adios, Uno. The next day, Uno came out doom, 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 to smell the flores. Doom, 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 doom. Doom, 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 doom. Hola. Oh, espera, espera. Hola. Hola. Me llamo tres. ¿Y tú? Me llamo uno. Ah, mucho gusto. Mucho gusto. Adiós. Adiós. Let's look at this phrase, ¿Cómo estás? How are you? We have it sandwiched between two question marks, and this is normal in Espanol. Have you ever been reading a sentence in English and you come to the end of it and you realize, oh, it's a question, and so now you go back and you have to read it again? Well, in Spanish, the upside down question mark lets you know it's a question, and so you know right from the beginning how to say it. Espera, wait. It's sandwiched between two exclamation marks. Why? I don't know, but it is. And sometimes, in fact, quite a few times, you'll notice that, especially when people are typing something out on a keyboard, you'll see that only the last exclamation mark or the last question mark is used because you have to work several keys, usually, to get the upside-down question mark or the upside-down exclamation point. Hola, huele. They both begin with the letter H, which we don't say. So, I'm sorry I said it, but it doesn't have a sound. H, hola, huele. Huele bien. It smells good. Huele. Huele cuatro. U, u. Now say it after me. Huele cuatro. Cuatro. Huele cuatro. So you could say to your teacher, this would be a female teacher, maestra. If it were a male teacher, it'd be maestro. You can say, maestra, huele bien. Maybe she'll like that and she'll give you a better grade. Or you can say to your granny, abuelita. 
huele bien.